Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm really excited to be doing a full face of Wet and Wild. I love doing these full face of affordable brands videos. I did do one for Milani, so if you missed that, I'll throw that up in the cards if you want to check it out. It did take me a little bit of time to gather enough products, because a lot of my drugstores and my Ulta's, they're always sold out of, like, all things wet and wild but i finally got enough to do a full face so before we jump into the video don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like these kinds of videos and if you have it and you liked i hope you will consider subscribing and hitting that little bell icon so you're notified whenever i post a new video every single monday through friday also, this is going to be a talk through. It's going to be a bit of a longer video, so get a snack, get yourself a coffee. I've got my coffee here. It's still fairly early in the morning, a nice gloomy day outside, so I'm excited to just sit down, try out a bunch of new products from Wet n Wild, try some that I haven't gone back to in a while, and some that I still love. So I've got all my products here. I was collecting all the Wet n Wild in like a bag and a Sephora bag just because it's a lot of like smaller things. So I'm gonna just dump everything. Oh geez. Okay, so I'm first gonna prime with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy Face Primer. I've definitely been preferring more of a uh, dewy primer nowadays. This one is definitely a bit tinted. So it looks kind of like a highlighter so let's go in so it definitely gives you a nice glow this is actually something that'd be nice to wear if you're doing like a no makeup makeup day I've worn this before with like I just did my eye makeup and then I put this on and it looked nice I'm definitely wearing foundation because I've had a little bit of a uh, breakout over the last week I was testing out a new foundation and I did see like some pimples pop up during the day when I was testing it out. But then again, it's also that time of the month. Uh, so maybe I just like <laughs> threw too much of my skin when it couldn't handle it. So I'm not testing out that foundation again until this clears up and when it's no longer that time of the month. But that being said, I do have quite a bit to cover up. So let's jump into the foundation. The foundation I bought a while ago, and again, I had so much like problems, so much problems. And again, I had a lot of issues like finding a shade that would match me. And I don't know, it's been so long since I've used this, I don't know if it's actually gonna match anymore. <laughs> so this is the Photo Focus Foundation. I have the shades Buff Bisque and bronze beige. I think finally bronze beige was a shade that did match me. It comes with a little spatula like this so I do have my little palette down here in case I do have to mix anything but I'm just hoping that bronze beige will work enough for me to just use it on its own. Oh my god way too much just came out. Way too much just came out Jesus. That's definitely it's a tad dark but I think I can work with it. I think I can work with it because I think the face powder that I have is a little too light. So let's try it. Let's try it. So back when I first used this foundation last year or the year before, honestly, I can't even remember at this point. I think it was last year. I used to only apply it with a sponge, but I do want to try it with a brush too. So I am just going to use, oh no, the presses are fraying a little bit. So I'm just going to use my Sigma F80 and just dot it on half of my face and then do the other half with a sponge and see how that works. Yeah, so right off the bat I'm seeing like a lot of brush strokes that I can't really blend away with the brush so I'm just gonna have to go in and smooth it with the sponge that I have let me try just going in with the brush on my forehead or the sponge Jesus words you know that is definitely like almost sheer coverage just with this brush this brush I can't speak just with the sponge so i think i'm going to continue just going in with the sigma brush and smoothing it out with the sponge and i'm definitely going to have to build it up around here i also don't think it's sitting well with the primer like if the combination feels weird on my skin which is strange because i've worn this foundation like with other primers and it doesn't feel this way and i've also worn this primer with other foundations it's 
it's a very strange feeling almost like they're I'm not blending them in together they're just like sitting on top of each other and like squishing around it's weird yeah definitely too dark of a shade but I am remembering now why I used to like this foundation I like you can build it up so it does build up to a solid medium coverage and it does look nice once you smooth everything out I don't think this is something you can go in with just a brush you definitely need to smooth it out with the sponge otherwise it's gonna look you're gonna see the brush strokes in it now it looks beautiful now but I do remember that with this foundation, it did heavily sink into my smile lines by the end of the day. This is a foundation that looks beautiful for like four or five hours. After that, like it always breaks down right around here. It never looks great around my nose at the end of the day. And then I always see some sort of creasing where I normally don't have creasing. You got some pros and you've got some cons. It does have a bit of a scent to it. I know some people say it smells like paint. The scent does go away after like you first put it on. And I do say it does look beautiful like when you first put it on. So if you're looking for like a short wear foundation, yeah, so it does look really nice right now, but just keep that in mind if you are trying or wanting to try out this foundation. It's not the most long lasting of foundations, but it is really affordable right up there at $6. And if you only need, you know, to wear a foundation for five hours, it's, excuse me, plain, it's a good option. <laughs> okay, concealers. I have the hardest time matching any shade of concealer with Wet n Wild. I just, I don't have any luck with it. Um, so I've got three here. I have two of their Photo Focus concealers. I have, what shade? I have Medium Tawny, which is definitely too dark. And then I have Light Medium Beige, which I think is going to be my best shot here. But then I also have this uh, Wet n Wild Illuminati highlighting and concealing pen and this one's a lot lighter so I might have to go in with this one and also I don't know why this is double-ended oh nope it's not double-ended it's a it's a twisty okay so let me try the photo focus one first just to see how bad that shade is okay and I will say that did stop me from trying some other like base products especially their concealers because it's so hard to find a shade match and for the most part, you can't... Oh, that's dark. Mm, okay. I think I'm going to go in with this and then lighten it with that other pen. Oh my god, my phone timer. Stop it. Put a little bit of that on. It's like almost blending into the shade of the foundation. There we go. We did it. Oh my god, this is actually darker. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. We're gonna cut our losses and just blend this out and see what happens. Uh. So it doesn't cover up my bags. It's definitely not a full coverage concealer and the shade's a bit off, but other than that, it actually looks like a nice light coverage concealer if that's what you're looking for. But it, again, it's just really hard to find a shade. <laughs> so I couldn't find a uh, loose powder. I don't know if they have loose powders. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I couldn't find one. So to set my under eyes, I'm actually going to go in with this contouring palette duo. This is in the shade Dulce de Leche and this like lighter shade right here because this is actually lighter than the face powder that I was able to find. I have the Photo Focus Pressed Power. Power. I have the Photo Focus Pressed Powder in Warm Beige and I think that's just a little light for my actual skin tone. But this one looks like a nice highlighting shade. So I'm just going to go in. Do I have a brush to use for this? Yes, I do. So I'm taking a Sigma F10 and I'm just going to take a little bit and just set the under eyes. I normally don't do this. I always go for a 
loose powder under there, but I do want to stay as close as I can to these Wet n Wild products. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. And then for the rest of my face, I'm going to set it with the Photo Focus Pressed Powder in Warm Beige. And so my skin's still feeling a bit sticky, even after I've applied the powder on. What the? That's the weirdest thing. It's like the powder is not even really going on. Okay. Oh, this, I gotta say, the base just feels really weird. You know what, let me just try setting the rest of my face with the shade in the contour palette and maybe it'll actually set it. Okay, that's feeling and looking a lot better. So that pressed powder, I, I wouldn't touch that again at all. There we go. So now that we're actually set, I do want to jump into a bronzer before I use one of these contouring palettes for the contour. Though, these do look warm enough that you could use them as a bronzer, but I did pick up a specific bronzer that I want to try out. So we're going to jump in with the Color Icon Bronzer in the shade Queensland. And this is part of one of their limited edition collections. They do way too many limited edition collections. It's got a dragon on it, whatever collection that one was. But these come in the same packaging as their Color Icon um highlighters gonna remember the word highlighters and i really did want to try this out because i didn't i wasn't aware of any other standalone like bronzer products from rotten wild and if they could do a bronzer standalone great Oof. i'd be all over it so i'm gonna take my usual bronzing brush and just dip in here i have tried this before i do like the tone of this bronzer that is a nice a nice tone the only thing is that it does doesn't seem to like cling to my brush that nice so i do have to kind of like build it up a bit and then you definitely have to blend it out So this does take a little bit of extra effort to blend out, so just be careful where you're actually placing it on your face. But I really do like the tone of the bronzer. But you do have to spend forever blending it. So for my contour now, I'm going to jump into that lighter highlighting palette in Dulce de Leche and just take a little bit of that contour shade on my NARS Eda brush. You know what, it actually doesn't really stand out much from the bronzer. Yeah, so let me try the darker one. This is in the shade Caramel Toffee, so let's just try a little bit of that one. Okay, that one looks better. That one does. Because so I do want, I don't want like a harsh, harsh contour, but I do want it to look different than my bronzer, so. Blend, blend, blend. So I do like how that contour blended out. It did turn out really nicely. So I did like these powders a lot better. Just like the formula of them for blending out especially better than this standalone bronzer. While this one, the tone does look really nice, it just takes so long to blend out. And actually, I used to have one of these, like one of the first makeup products I ever bought, probably the first contour product I ever bought, was this darker palette right here. And I tried using the banana powder just like straight up, like baked under my eyes. And I had no idea how to actually wear a bronzer or a contour. And I ended up decluttering it. So I bought this like years ago, decluttered it, and 
came back to it again and I actually really do like it now that I know how to use it. So this does make a really nice contour. This is more of a banana shade. It might be a little too dark for me to use under my eyes, but the lighter shade from this one does look really nice. So I think my perfect palette would have been like this darker bronzer shade, bronzer contour shade with this lighter shade right there. That would have worked out nice. Maybe I could pop them. Maybe. Okay, so moving on to a blush. I have another shade of their Color Icon Ombre blush that I haven't tried yet. I have tried their regular or another shade in this line, and I do like the formula, but that shade itself didn't look that great on me. And this is more of their peach one. So this is my tie buy you a drink. So it's more of like a really light peach to like a medium toned peach down here. So let me try to open this up without ruining my nails. Now that we finally have the blush open, let's try to put it on. Okay, so this blush looks really light, so I'm basically just going to take it from the bottom half of the blush and see how it goes on. I can barely see that. I feel like I'm just moving like my bronzer around. Okay, that's not really impressing me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I feel like it'd probably make a better highlighter, like the top part, right? Yeah, we're not, we're not doing so great so far. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's jump into something that I've actually been really excited to try because I love, love their formula on this. This is their new highlighting palette. So this is the Mega Glow highlighting palette. This is $14.99. I got it at Ulta. These are the shades that you get in this palette. They did come out with another shade or another palette that had more colorful shades. This one's definitely more neutral. You have like a white, you have a dark bronze, you have a light pink, and then you have a light gold over here. I really want to try this light pink, so let me just take a little bit. That's beautiful. You know, if there's anything that you try from Wet n Wild, try their highlighters. I love I think I have like six of them. Yes, okay, so let's look at this white right here. It looks almost like it has a bit of a purpley kind of undertone to it. The dark bronze is definitely too dark for me to use as a highlight, but it is a beautiful shade and I do like that they included a darker highlighter shade in this palette. And this light bronze, I think I can make work if I use a light hand. So those are the other shades right there. I love their highlighters. I love Wet n Wild highlighters. I really was on the fence about their last palette, but I know I don't reach for like a blue highlighter that often or a green highlighter. So I'm really excited that they came out with this neutral palette. Definitely worth the $14.99. I, I already love this. And I've been using their individual Mega Glow highlighting highlighters for like years and ah, I love love them. Oh, this highlighter save this look. <laughs> Please. So for brows, I got their Ultimate Brow Mascara, which is just like a tinted brow gel, and this is the shade Nothing But Brunette. So I like the small spoolie you get on here. So I'm just going to comb this through my brows. Oh, that shade is off. Uh Jesus, take the wheel. Okay, this brow turned out a lot better. I don't know what happened with this brow, but I mean, other than the fact that the shade is horrendous on me, the gel actually like holds down all my hairs, which is a bit tough to do because my hairs are just a bit crazy. 
Uh, I do want to see how it dries down. But if I might get this in like the next, I might just get it in the black shade. Because I thought, like, this is like the darkest brown that they had. And it, this is a light brown. Ooh, so if I can find this in the black shade, I'd probably pick it up. Because it did hold everything down. I gotta see how it dries, though. I know Wet n Wild does have an eyeshadow primer, like, base, but I could not for the life of me get my hands on it. So I'm just gonna go back in with their Photo Focus Concealer in their lighter, the lighter shade that I got, the light medium beige. And then I'm just going to set that using that light shade from the contour palette. Okay, so this is at the point where before I do my eyes, I normally would go in with a setting spray to just kind of meld down all of my powders. I have two from Wet n Wild. I've got their matte finishing spray and their natural finishing spray. I think this is supposed to be more of a dewy one. Um, this one I'm not a huge fan of. The sprayer is actually pretty nice, but I don't think this actually does as good of a job of melting everything together. Um, if you're looking for a cheap dewy setting spray, go for the Catrice. I'm finally able to get my hands on it and it's amazing sidebar um but i do like their matte finishing spray better so i'm just gonna give this a shake and i gotta give it to them they do have an awesome sprayer on their bottle and the matte spray is great it's not a great setting setting spray like it's not gonna prolong your makeup so this is something along the lines of your milani make it last your fix plus um it's really just gonna make your face just and then if you want to prolong your makeup, go in with another makeup prolonging setting spray. But this is really nice. So my face already looks 10 times better just with that spray. And most of that weird feeling that I had with like the foundation and the primer is for the most part gone away. Or I've just gotten used to it. Now that we've got all that done, we're going to jump into something that I personally love from Wet n Wild. Their eyeshadows. I have two of their 10 pan palettes here. I have their comfort zone and then I also have the not a basic peach palette. Since I don't know what lip I'm going to go with, I kind of want to go with not a basic peach because comfort zone, while a little bit more neutral, does have some, I don't know, I feel like I could go with more lip colors if I use the not a basic peach. Um, but I do love both of these palettes. Their eyeshadows are bomb quality for like ten dollars this is a 10 pan palette for ten dollars ah uh, you can't get much better so i'm just gonna take that top transition shade and just kind of give myself a nice color base next i'm gonna take like this kind of orangey shade right here and just put that in my transition i just love how easy like all these shades are to blend out Next, I'm going to deepen that up with like this darker transition shade right here on the bottom of the palette. I don't know what I want to put on my lid. They have so many nice shades in here. Should I go with the orangey? No, that orangey looks too close to the transition. Let's go with the gold. I'm going to pop this gold shade all over my lid. And I don't think they have a glittery glue. I don't, I don't know. Ooh. So I'm going to jump in with my regular NYX glitter glue just because I use it literally anytime I do my makeup and then put that gold shade all over my lid. I did get a little bit of fallout from that shade so I'm just going to wipe that away. And then I'm just going to go in with my two transition shades on my lower lash line. Just a nice, simple, quick look. And last but not least, for my inner corner highlight, I love matching my inner corner highlight to my face highlight. So I'm going to take that same light pink highlighter shade from the highlighter palette. Just pop that on my inner corner. Ooh, you can really build that up to blinding. Oh. And that's all I'm going to do for shadows on the eye. So to finish up the eye look, I'm going to jump in with some liner. I have two liners here. Uh, this is the Skinny Tip Eyeliner, which I think I'm going to use this one. It's so small. I do like how that looks. 
And then I have the Proline Felt Tip Eyeliner, and this one, that's huge. So I think I'm gonna go in with this Skinny Tip one. And I'm not gonna try to wing it out or anything. I like the eye look, so I'm just gonna do a normal line. I actually really like that. It's a little bit difficult using it because it's so small, but I like how precise that was. And it does feel really like full of liner. So I do like this one. Not not as much of a fan of this big felt tip one because it's it doesn't get as full of product and like it just drags across your eye. Like definitely like this one better. So personally, I'm not actually a huge fan of Wet n Wild mascaras other than their Mega Length Mascara, which is like a, a really thin, skinny mascara. A lot of people use it just for your bottom lashes. I also like it for my top lashes, but no other mascaras from them have really impressed me. So I did go out and pick up one of their mascaras. This is the Max Fanatic Cat Eye Mascara. It's kind of huge. And I already don't like the brush. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so the brush is like really, really skinny towards the inside and then gets a lot fatter towards the outside. I guess it's supposed to mimic a cat eye. Well, we shall see. We shall see. So let me curl my lashes. I'm going to try and take off as much of the extra like glop as I can. And then... Oh, okay, yeah, that did next to nothing for my lashes. And I poked myself in the eye. Oh. Yeah, that's not, that's a no. All right, now to finish up the look with lipstick. I have quite a few of their Mega Last Liquid Catsuit lipsticks in here. And everyone at this point, if you've seen my channel at all, you know that I adore the shade Rebel Rose. Favorite shade ever. So I don't want to use Rebel Rose today just because I know I always reach for that one. So let's go through here and pick out another shade. Okay, so two other shades that I really love from this line are Nudie Patootie, just a nice kind of light nude, and then Missy and Fierce, which is a red shade. You know what? Let's go with Missy and Fierce. Let's try it out. We might as well. Don't think it'll look too crazy with the look that we already got going. Ooh, it looks really pretty. Okay. Ooh. I've said this before, there are so many like hits and misses within their lipstick lines, but when they get it right, they get it right. My top three picks from their line is Nudie Patootie, Missy and Fierce, and then Rebel Rose, of course. So that is it for this full face of Wet and Wild. Oh, it was a journey, <laughs> a journey. So out of all these products, which ones would I recommend? I do love those shades that I mentioned from their lipstick line. There are definitely some misses in their line, but if you stick to either their nudes their reds, and their mauves. You should be fine. I don't like their glitter or metallic lips. They don't look that great. They don't wear that great. But the shades like Rebel Rose, shades like Missy and Fierce are just oh, amazing. And they're only like $6. Oh, great deal. Their eyeshadow palettes. If you don't have these, get them. They're affordable. They're incredible. They practically blend out themselves. Just to put it out there. And then people have mentioned that this other comfort zone one is kind of a dupe for the ABH Mario palette that came out a while ago. But they're just great palettes on their own. They do have quite a few like quads and like duos and trios. I personally struggle with reaching for smaller palettes, so I am more likely to go for one of these bigger palettes, but those palettes are just the same amazing quality as these bigger palettes. If anything, I feel like Wet n Wild should take this formula and come out with like a, a even bigger palette. They could do like a Lorac Mega Pro kind of thing with these eyeshadows and I would go for it because 
I love their eyeshadows. I really do like their matte finish uh, setting spray. It's not really great for prolonging your makeup, but if it's another, it's another option along with like the Catrice spray and the Milani spray for a good melding spray from the drugstore. And this one has an amazing spray. I do like the Catrice bottle sprayer better, but this is right underneath the Catrice. This is actually a better sprayer than the Milani one. So if you're looking for like a nice spray bottle, right there. I actually really like their little contour palettes and even though they do lean more towards like a bronzy kind of shade, you can make them work as a contour as well. And if your skin tone allows it, this is actually a pretty good face powder. I, I would not touch their photo focus face powder with a 10 foot pole. I wouldn't. Their highlighting palette, of course, I love Wet n Wild highlighters. I've raved about them for a long time here on my channel. I have like six other individual ones and I'm so glad that I got this palette. This is such a great palette. It's very neutral, very everyday, and you get so much product for $14.99. Like this, if there's something you pick up this holiday season from Wet n Wild, make it this highlighting palette and that little mini lipstick bundle they're coming out with, which is awesome. The product that actually surprised me the most in this video was their ultimate brow mascara while the shade is horrendous it actually dried down the way i like a brow gel to dry down and it's holding all of my brow hairs in place which surprisingly like with affordable like brow gels i found that not all of them actually dry down and they stay like mushy throughout the day and they don't hold everything in place whereas this one surprised me it did. So if anything, I'm going to pick this up in like the black shade and test it out even more because I'm fairly impressed by you. Okay, and that is everything. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, let me know down below and also let me know what is your favorite Wet n Wild product. Thank you for watching and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.